Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Friday, November 6, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's college football game results and look ahead to tonight and the weekend. Thursday night football recap that game. Look ahead to week number nine of the NFL. We'll talk about the NBA season, the 2020-2021 season finally being somewhat approved, which is awesome. And the election, the latest with that, and my Fab Five and best bet for the day and weekend, respectively. All right, we'll start with college football. We had two games last night, and it's going to be interesting to see this weekend, obviously. Nevada over Utah State, 34-9. Nevada... 3-0, Utah State, 0-3, this was my best bet, and it did not come through, I was off by like 5 points, that's it, but yeah, I've been called on best bets, and then Colorado State over Wyoming, 34-24, Colorado State 1-1, Wyoming 1-2, and and this was the pick I got correct last night, in college football. All right. In terms of picks for the weekend, we'll start with tonight. You have Miami at North Carolina State. And right now, Miami is favored by 10.5 total, 58.5. I project Miami 3.5 total, 59. I'm taking NC State in the points. Um, NC State's not that bad. Um, Miami, I think, could be looking ahead here a little bit. I really don't trust this Hurricane team. So give me NC State plus three, uh, the 10.5, and, and I think that Miami will ultimately win the game. Next up, San Jose State, San Diego State. San Diego State's giving 9.5, over under 48.5. I project... San Diego State, 4.5, total 42. I'm going to take the under here as my play. Um, I think that San Diego State's a good defensive team, and I think San Jose offense is going to regress to the mean a little bit. So give me the under 48.5, and I think San Jose State covers, but San Diego State will win. Next up, BYU, Boise State. BYU is giving 3.5 over under 61.5. I have Boise State. As a one-point favorite, total 60. I'm taking Boise State plus a three and a half, and I think they win the game outright. They are plus 142 on the money line. I think that this is a big spot for Boise State. It's like a perfect game for them. BYU needs this game to make the college football playoff, but Boise's going to get for it, and guess what? I actually think Boise's going to win, so give me Boise State plus three and a half. 12 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, Arizona State, USC. USC is giving 10.5 over under 56.5. I project this game actually to be a pick them in a total at 60. I'm taking Zona State plus the 10.5. Herm Edwards a good coach. It was a much better hire than I ever would have thought. As far as I'm concerned, Clay Helton is still the coach at University of Southern California. I think that this is a closer game than people think, and I think that Arizona State's actually got a real shot here, but I do think that USC will come away with the win. But I do think Arizona State will cover the point spread. Arkansas State, Louisiana, Lafayette, UL, 14.5, total 68.5. I project Louisiana, 6.5, total 61. I'm going to go with Arkansas State getting to 14.5. I don't really love it, but... Louisiana hasn't been the same team since they upset Iowa State earlier in the year, so give me Arkansas State plus the points. Next up's Liberty, Virginia Tech. Or no, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Liberty, Virginia Tech. Vatek giving 14.5, total 67.5. I have Vatek 10, total 64.5, so I'm going to take Liberty getting the points. But I do think Virginia Tech will win the game. Yo Monroe, Georgia State. Georgia State giving 19.5 total. 59.5 I project. 
Georgia State 8, total 61. I'm going to take Yale Monroe in the points. I don't really love this play, but I think that Georgia State is incredibly overvalued in this spot. Next up, Michigan, Indiana. Michigan giving 2.5, total 54.5. I project Michigan to be favored by 4.5, total 59.5. This is a tough call for me for the podcast in terms of where to act exactly go. I don't feel good about it, but I'm going to take over 54 and a half. And I also like Michigan minus the points as well. Bounce back spot for Michigan. I think Indiana's fraudulent. And I think that uh, they finally uh, don't get it done. And I like the over here. I think there's going to be a lot of points scored in this game. So over for the podcast, but I also like um, Michigan as well. Michigan State, Iowa. Iowa's giving 6 and a half, total 46 and a half. I project Iowa to be favored in this spot by two, total 50 and a half. I'm going to take Sparty, getting the six and a half. Do I like it? No. And I also like over 46 and a half as well. Next up, Northwestern, Nebraska. Northwestern is giving three and a half, total 54 and a half. I project this game to be a pick in a total of 56 and a half. I like the under in this spot. Um, I think the Northwestern's offense could regress to the mean a little bit, and I also like Nebraska getting the three and a half as well. So for the podcast, fifty-four and a half under, and then Nebraska getting the three and a half. I also like, but the podcast plays the under. Next up, UNC Duke. UNC giving eleven and a half total, sixty-two and a half. I project UNC to be favored by 18.5, total 59.5. I love North Carolina here, minus the points. It's a good bounce back spot for them. I think Duke stinks. Let's give me UNC minus 11.5. Next up, SMU Temple. SMU giving 17.5 on the road, total 61.5. I project SMU to be favored in this spot by 10, total 66.5. I like Temple getting the 17 half. I don't think they're this bad. They're home. I think they could play a, a little spoiler here and keep it close. So give me Temple plus 17 and a half. Next up, South Florida, Memphis. Memphis giving 18 and a half, total 64 and a half. I project Memphis 13 and a half, total 63 and a half. I like South Florida getting the points, but I don't love it. Next up, Tulane East Carolina. Tulane giving three and a half total, sixty and a half. I project Tulane to be giving six and a half total, sixty-five and a half. I like Tulane giving the three and a half. Um, I don't like a lot of favorites this week, but Tulane's one of them, and I also like the over. So Tulane giving three and a half is the podcast play, but I also like the over. West Virginia, Texas. Texas giving 6.5, total 54.5. I project Texas to be an 8-point favorite with a total of 61.5. I'm going to go over 54.5. I think that both these offenses can flat out score. What worries me about this pick is the West Virginia defense is actually pretty good, but I do like the over 54.5. I think this game will be played into the 60s, and I think Texas will win. Troy against Georgia Southern. Troy's giving 2.5 total, 54.5. I project Troy 3.5 total, 48. I like the under in this game. Um, Georgia Southern is not a high-scoring team, and Troy's actually somewhat competent defensively, so I'm going to take under 54.5, and I think that Troy will win. Next up, Boston College, Syracuse, BC giving 13.5, total 52.5. I project this to be Syracuse by, or I'm sorry, Syracuse getting 5.5, total 51. I'm going to take Syracuse getting the points again, but I don't think they'll win. I just think they keep that relatively close against a BC team that I've been on a lot this year. But they've been disappointing me lately. 
UMass against Marshall. Marshall giving a whopping 44.5 total, 55.5 I project. Marshall will be giving 9 total, 39.5. I love the under. I think that UMass could get shut out here. Marshall could win this 50 to nothing. Appalachian State, Texas State. App State's giving 20.5, total 56.5. I project App State to be favored by 21 with a total of 54. I'm going to go under 56.5. I think my numbers are pretty close, but this is my number of the widest margin on this game. I could see App State winning this game 40 to 13, and that would be an under. Next up, North Alabama, Southern Miss. Southern Miss is laying 17.5. Over under 53.5. I project Southern Miss to be 28 and a total of 52.5. Now we're in the 3 o'clock window, guys. If I didn't mention that earlier, I apologize. I'm going to lay the 17.5 at Southern Miss. I think North Alabama is super overvalued. So give me... Southern Miss, minus the 17 and a half. 330 window now, Arizona, Utah. Utah giving 13 and a half, total 56 and a half. I project Utah to be favored in this spot by... Hmm, nine in the total 52. I'm going to take the under here. Um, Utah's a pretty solid defensively, and I don't trust Arizona offensively. It just comes down to that pretty much. Charlotte, Middle Tennessee. Charlotte laying 4.5, total 64.5. I have Charlotte projected by a half, total 59.5. I like the over. I think that this is... I'm sorry, I like the under here. What am I saying, the over? I like the under here. I don't trust Middle Tennessee's offense. Charlotte's improved. Next up, Georgia, Florida. Georgia laying 3.5, total 53.5. I project Georgia to be favored by five with a total of 56 and a half. I'm going to lay the three and a half with Georgia as the podcast pick. I just think this is a good spot for them, regardless of who plays a quarterback. But I just like them laying the points more than the over. That's what it ultimately comes down to for me. Next up, Fresno State, UNLV. Fresno's giving 11.5, total 57.5. I project Fresno 4.5, total 52. I'm taking the UNLV in the points, but I don't think they'll win the game, per se. Houston, Cincinnati. Cincinnati's laying 13.5, total 53.5. I project Cincinnati by 10.5. With the... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I... I project Cincinnati 13 total, 54 and a half. Hmm. All right, so the numbers are moving on me a little bit. Um, I was going to take Houston. But right now, I have to take the over. I'm going to switch. I initially had Houston plus 13 and a half written down, but I'm going to change my pick to the over because I have a bigger edge on the over now at 53 and a half. Kansas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma giving a whopping 38 and a half, total 63 and a half. I project Oklahoma 23 and a half, total 68 and a half. I'm taking the over. Kansas overs are automatic at this point. Next up, Maryland, Penn State. Penn State giving a whopping 25.5, total 64.5. I have Penn State giving only 6, total 68 is my projection. I'm taking the 25.5 of Maryland. Tolia Tungavaloa showed a ton of promise a week ago, and I think they keep this one relatively close. Minnesota, Illinois. Minnesota is giving 7.5, total 61.5. I project Minnesota to be favored. By three with a total of 66. I'm going to take over 61 and a half. I think this is well into the 60s, maybe even the 70s. And I kind of do like Illinois uh, taking the points as well. 
Texas Tech, TCU. TCU is giving 8.5 total, 61.5. I project TCU by 10 total, 61. I'm laying the 8.5 of TCU, but I don't love it. UTSA, Rice. Rice giving 3.5 total, 46.5. I project this game to be U- uh, Pickham in a total of 54.5. I love the over here. Rice has improved offensively. And UTSA, I think, can score on Rice. So give me over 46 and a half. Next up, Vanderbilt, Mississippi State. Um, the Bulldogs are giving eight and a half total, 44 and a half. I project this to be a pick em, believe it or not. And or I'm sorry, no, wrong game. Mississippi State by five, total 46. I'm taking Vandy getting 18 and a half. I just think that Mississippi State's not that good. So this is more of an anti-Bulldogs pick than it is a pro-Vandy pick. But I think that the Bulldogs will win. Oklahoma State, Kansas State, 4 o'clock. OK State's giving 11.5, total 45.5. I project the Cowboys by 9.5, total 49. I am taking the over in Oklahoma State game for once. Um, I just think that um, they're going to score a little more, a bit more. And um, their defense is good, but I think Kansas State's defense is not that good. Pitt against Florida State. Pitt's getting 2.5 total, 51.5. I project Florida State to be giving... Hmm, where's that? 2 and the total 52. I hate this because this is the game where my projections are the closest. At gunpoint, I'm going to take Pitt plus the two and a half as the play for the podcast. But I was debating the over as well. Six o'clock, Western Kentucky, Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic is giving six and a half, total 39 and a half. I project this game to be FAU seven and a half, total 41. So my numbers are close here. I'm going to take the over here. I just think that this easily goes into the 40s. Baylor, Iowa State at 7 o'clock. Iowa State's giving 13.5, total 47.5. I project Iowa State 11, total 53.5. So I'm taking the over in this game. I think this game is played well into the 50s. Next up, A&M, South Carolina. A&M giving 9.5, total 58.5. I project A&M as a 5-point favorite and a total of 59.5. I'm taking South Carolina in the points to keep this game close, but not the win. UCLA, Colorado. UCLA is giving 6.5, total 55.5. I project UCLA by, where is that? (sighs) UCLA I project as a... Three-point favor, total 57.5. I like Colorado getting the six and the hook. The hook's intriguing. So I'm getting Colorado with the six and a half. I think that they're live, but I don't know if they'll actually win the game. Clemson, Notre Dame. Clemson giving four and a half, total 50 and a half. No Trevor Lawrence. I project, wait for it, Notre Dame four and a half, total 53. I'm taking the Irish. I have a whole, I have the same number, but the wrong side. I'm taking Notre Dame plus the four and a half, and I'm taking the win straight up at plus 176 on the money line. This is their best shot to get a signature win under Brian Kelly in the regular season, and I think this is it. Stanford and Oregon at 7:30 as well. Stanford is an eight and a half point underdog, total 51 and a half. I project Oregon by six. With a total of 49 and a half, I'm going to take the Cardinal getting the eight and a half. Oregon has opt outs all over their roster. I think that this could be a bounce back year for David Shaw and Stanford, but I don't think they'll win the game, but I think they'll keep this game competitive because this is a program with a lot of pride. Next up, Rutgers against Ohio State. Ohio State's giving 37.5, total of 64. 
I project Ohio State 13 total 62. I'm going to take Rutgers getting the points. I don't like the pick, but Greg Schiano has that team playing hard. And obviously Schiano was an Ohio State assistant at one point under Urban Meyer, so I think he'll be motivated a little bit. All I'm asking for is Ohio State to win by 37 at most. Next up, Tennessee, Arkansas. Tennessee's laying one and a half, total 52 and a half. I project Tennessee, three and a half, total 51. I hate this pick. This is my least favorite pick of the week. I'm taking Tennessee minus the points. I was hoping I'd be on Arkansas and Tennessee would be overvalued, but nope. I have to be on the bold, on the on the uh, on the balls. Next up, you got South Alabama, Coastal Carolina. South Alabama is a 17 and a half point underdog. The total is 55 and a half. I project the um, Coastal Carolina to be five and a half point favorites. Total um, at 53 and a half. I absolutely love South Alabama covering. I just think that Coastal Carolina is looking ahead a little bit, and I think they'll trip up somewhere in terms of an against the spread. So give me South Alabama plus 17 and a half, and South Alabama hasn't been that bad this year. Next up, you have Oregon State and Washington State. Oregon State's laying one and a half, total 65 and a half. I project Wazoo actually to be favored in this game by six. Total 66 and a half. This is a big discrepancy. I love Wazoo here. I think they'll win the game. And I also have an... Actually, no, it's too close with the total. So give me Washington State plus one and a half, and they're plus 104, or plus 106 on the money line. I like that as well. And last but not least, New Mexico, Hawaii. Hawaii's giving 15 and a half total. 63 and a half. I project Hawaii as a one-point favorite total of 52.5. I'm taking New Mexico in the points. Um, the case for Hawaii is that this is a bounce-back spot. But I just don't think New Mexico is that bad. So give me New Mexico getting to 15.5 to keep this game competitive. All right. Now we'll move on to the NFL. Um, we will first go over the Thursday night game. And then... We will look ahead to the weekend. The Packers defeat the 49ers 34-17. So I was correct with my over call for this game as the Packers get a much-needed win to go to 6-2. and San Fran is 4-5. and Aaron Rodgers looked like the Aaron Rodgers of old. 25-31, 305 yards and four touchdowns. And Nate Mullins, 22-35, 291 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Um, it's just devastating for the 49ers with all these injuries. And there's um, Richie James, who just steps up and looks like a real guy. So that's a good opportunity for him, but his team didn't win, obviously. Devontae Adams looked like Devontae Adams. Aaron Jones came back for the Packers, which was a boost to their offense for sure. All right, picks time for Sunday. This should be a lot of fun. First up, Ravens-Colts. Ravens giving one and a half, total 48 and a half. I project the Ravens and the Colts to be a pick them with a total of 48. I'm taking the Colts getting one and a half. I, I don't like this pick at all because my numbers are too close. But that's the closest call. Yeah, and then the total went up to 48 and a half. So I actually have an edge on the under in this game now since the total went up. But the play for the podcast is going to be the Colts. Panthers Chiefs, Chiefs giving 10 and a half, total 52 and a half. I project the Chiefs to be favored by 11, total 48 and a half. I'm taking the under here. Um, Chiefs went under the total last week, but that was more about their opponent. But the case against this pick is that Christian McCaffrey's back for the Panthers this week. 
but I still don't love the Panthers' offense that much. And I think that the Chiefs might be looking ahead a little bit here, so that's another case for the under, but I just have a big edge on the under. If it's 30-20 Kansas City, it's a win for me. Next up, Bears-Titans. Titans giving 6.5, total 47.5. I project Titans 2.5, total 48.5. I like the Bears getting the 6.5. No, they won't win. I just think this is a closer game than people think. And I think that their offense will finally um, get going here a little bit after showing some signs of life against New Orleans. Next up, Broncos Falcons. Broncos are a four and a half point underdog total of fifty. I project the Broncos actually to be favored in this game by what's the number? Two. Total fifty and a half. I love Denver getting the points. I think they win the game outright. They are plus one eighty on the money line as well. Detroit, Minnesota. Minnesota's giving four and a half, total fifty and a half. This is a tough line to project due to the um, COVID uncertainty with Matt Stafford, who was placed on the COVID list. Without Stafford, I have mini eight and a half, but with Stafford, I have mini four, total 55 and a half. I'm going to lay the four and a half with the Vikings for now, but my podcast play will change to over 50 and a half. If Matthew Stafford plays. But for right now, it's Vikings minus four and a half. But if it's announced that Stafford will play, the podcast pick will be over 50 and a half. Houston, Jacksonville. Houston giving six and a half, total 50 and a half. I have Jacksonville getting four and a half as a projection, total 54. No Gardner Minshew in this game, which is. Makes my numbers look different. I'm taking the over here. It's funny because earlier in the year, um, I had a big edge on the under in this matchup, and now I have an edge in the over in this matchup. So give me over 50.5 for Houston Jacksonville. I don't love it because I know Gardner Minshew, but I just could see um, Houston putting up a lot of points here. And not really giving up on themselves. Next up, you have the New York Giants and the Washington professional football team. The football team's giving two and a half total. 52 and a half. I project the Washington professional football team to giving three and a half with a total of 43. My numbers are very close here, so I don't like this pick, but I'm going to lay the two and a half with the Washington professional football team, especially on the fact that it's under three. I like the over a little bit too, but the podcast play is going to be the Washington professional football team minus the two and a half. Seattle Seahawks, Buffalo Bills. Seattle's giving three and a half total 55. I project Buffalo one and a half total 56. I'm taking the Bills plus the three and I'm taking them to win straight up at plus 140 on the money line. Four o'clock window. Raiders Chargers. Chargers giving four, uh, one and a half, total 51 and a half. I project Chargers one, total 54. I love the over here. I think this is going to be a shootout. Both teams have good offenses. I think the Raider offense will bounce back after a bad weather game. And the Chargers offense is good with Justin Herbert. So give me the over 51 and a half. Next up, Dolphins, Cardinals. Cardinals giving three and a half, total 49 and a half. I project the Cardinals to giving five and a half with a total of 47 and a half. So I'm going to lay it with the Cardinals here at three and a half. This is like one of the only favorites I actually sort of like this week. So unless if Stafford's out with COVID, then I like the Vikings too. But give me the Cardinals minus three and a half in this one. Next up, Steelers-Cowboys. Steelers giving a whopping 14 total, 41 and a half. I project Steelers eight and a half total, 53 and a half. I like the over here. I know Cowboy overs um, have bit me in the ass lately, but this over is all about the Steelers' offense. I think that they can put up 38 points, and all Dallas has to do is score a touchdown, and that's it. 
Dallas' defense has been a little bit better, but I think that has to do with their opponents. But this is the off best offense they faced in a while. So give me the over 41 and a half. I think Pittsburgh can nearly hit this over by themselves. And last but not least, Sunday night football, Saints Buccaneers, Saints giving or getting three and a half total fifty and a half. I project Tampa two total fifty four and a half. I love the over here. Two very good offenses. Um, the Saints defense, I think, is a little vulnerable though, as we saw last week. And even the Bucks defense has shown a little bit of vulnerabilities. They allowed Daniel Jones to potentially tie the game last week. Although they um, did get lucky with the flag that shouldn't have been picked up. But um, so give me over 50 and a half. I think both offenses will rock and roll. And I sort of like the Saints getting four and a half as well, but not enough to pull the trigger as the podcast play. So the podcast play is going to be the um, over 50 and a half. We'll save Monday Night Football for Monday, and that's between the Patriots and the Jets. Now I'm going to talk about the return of the NBA. Last night, Woj broke the news. The Board of Governors and players vote to approve season starting in late December, December 22nd, 72 games. Great, great, great news for the NBA. This is so exciting. And now the ramifications come about, whether they'll allow fans in the stands in the arenas, I think that they should do what the NFL did and have limited fans at certain arenas. Um, or did they go to a bubble for a little bit and then start it off? So that's another subplot to follow of this. So this is very, like I said, exciting news. And obviously we have the draft coming up on November 18th. We'll obviously start doing more mock drafts starting next week on the show. And then free agency is rumored to be on the 20th or the 21st. So that is right after the draft. So, like I said, very, very exciting. And then obviously, um, after all the free agency and stuff, I think by... I think they're making the schedule probably right now, but I bet they don't release it until after some free agency's over because you never know. There could be star players on the move and whatnot. So, like I said, fun times, and now we wait on the National Hockey League and see what their plans are for the season. And I think that if the NBA goes to arenas but not with limited fans or no fans. I think the NHL will follow suit because normally the NHL follows suit with the NBA. So that's obviously the next thing to follow. And starting next week, as I mentioned, we will um, do more NBA mock drafts. And it's funny, Danny Green went on a Ringer podcast and said that LeBron wouldn't play if um, or wouldn't start the season if they started in December. That couldn't have been more false because now the league's approved it. That means LeBron James has signed off on it. So, And plus, I don't think that about LeBron. Maybe he'll have load management days, but I don't see him not, like, sitting out. It's LeBron James, for crying out loud, the best player in the NBA still. So I, I don't see how LeBron sits out, even though his team's the defending champions and he has every right to do what he wants pretty much. But Le even LeBron, I think, wants to play and really is motivated to get the Lakers um, to repeat as NBA champions. Obviously, they got to resign Anthony Davis as well, so... As I mentioned earlier, this is awesome news, and obviously, if any news breaks regarding like COVID um, protocols for the NBA with fans and whatnot, we'll talk about it on the podcast. 
Now I want to talk about the election a little bit. We have some breaking news coming in that Joe Biden has taken the lead in both Pennsylvania and Georgia, which is huge for the Democratic Party. And that obviously means that um, he's a real shot at pretty much sealing the election today. 49.4 to 49.3 in Pennsylvania. The difference is 5,587 between Biden and Trump. But 95% of the vote in, so Biden's looking like he's in great shape to uh, steal this election. He has 3,295,304 votes. Trump, 3,289,717 votes in Pennsylvania. And then he took the lead in Georgia, too which we'll get to, Um, and as of now, he, oh, Joe Biden has an 11,000 point lead in Nevada with 89% of the vote, so it's like, like, as I mentioned, it's looking more and more likely that maybe today we'll officially get word that for the first time in a long time that um, a president won't get its second term as Joe Biden will win the White House over Donald J. Trump. And you know for sure that Trump's going to be filing lawsuits and stuff because of the uh, mail-in voting and all that stuff with Michigan and Pennsylvania and Georgia especially. And then Biden has a, I want to say like a, in the thousands lead for Georgia as well. And in the House, the Democrats have controlled the House 226 to 209. But that's combined with the Senate and the White House, as I mentioned. But it is too close to call. So it's going to be interesting to see if Donald can uh, get a couple of these more votes or. It's over. And then right now, Arizona, 90% of the votes in. Biden, 50.1%. Trump, 48.5%. Biden, 1,532,062. Trump, 1,485,010. And the Georgia, 99% in. 49.4 all. Biden, 2,449,582. Trump, 2,448,485. So, as I mentioned, it's looking more and more likely that Biden will win this election. And then in North Carolina, by the way, Trump 50%, Biden 48% with 95% of the vote. And that could be irrelevant because it looks more and more likely that Joe Biden will win the White House. And I don't remember the last time that a president only had one turn. I'm going to look that up right now. Last time president had one term. It wasn't Bill Clinton. So it looks like the last time we had that was George H.W. Bush in, in the 90s. It was the last time... We had um, a president do one term. And by the way, the Republicans lead the Senate 48-47. So like I said, it's not over yet, but it's looking more and more likely that Joe Biden will win this election. And we have breaking news coming in, not election-related, sports-related. The Boston Red Sox have rehired Alex Cora as their manager. Um... Boston's just going to blow up over this. Um, John Heyman broke the news. Um, I'm not that surprised. Um, Dan Lischafts and Joe Murray were talking about on their show on 98.5 in Boston that they thought that Alex Cora would return as the Red Sox manager after a one-year suspension, and here we are. Um Obviously, he's better than uh, Ron Renneke. Um, 
I thought that he was a little overrated in their championship run in 2018 due to the fact that they cheated. Um, and then last year they underachieved. And then this year they were terrible. I think they had the worst season of any team in Major League Baseball, in my opinion, because they're a big market team with expectations. But meanwhile, everyone and their brother knew they were going to be bad. And Renneke did not do the job. And Cora, obviously, the players loved him. And I'm just fascinated to see how Boston's going to react to that. That is just a crazy Friday morning news dump in that city and in Major League Baseball. So it's good to have him back in baseball in the sense of that his reputation, like A.J. Hinch is, is not really taking the hit as we thought. Because if their reputation really took in that big of a hit, neither of them would be in Major League Baseball anymore. So... Obviously, A.J. Hinch is with the Tigers, and I talked about that last week and thought that that was a good hire for a team that is looking to potentially be a win-now team within the next three to five years. And with the Red Sox, you know they want to bounce back after a bad season, and they don't want to rebuild. So um, I personally think that um, it's not a, the best hire, but not the worst, quote-unquote, rehire for the Red Sox. But I just know that that clubhouse just got a whole lot happier because um, they um, really love him as a manager. And obviously... Um, he means a lot to those players because of the championship, although they cheated. And um, he's just a good guy. And the Red Sox probably realized, like, everybody makes mistakes. And um, I think their ownership kind of wanted this higher more than uh, more than the GM. But you never know. Maybe um, the new GM signed off on it. So um, there you have it. Breaking baseball news. Alex Cora back to the Boston Red Sox. And now I'm going to do my Fab Five for the week. Um, we'll start in college football. Um, first up, North Carolina laying 11.5 against Duke. I think Duke's terrible. Um, Chase Bryce is overrated because he had that one great drive against Syracuse, and they barely beat Syracuse that day. So that's what, for me, makes Chase Bryce overrated. So give me Carolina man, minus 11.5. I think this is a bounce back spot for Sam Howell and the Tar Heels. Next up, Maryland getting 25.5 against Penn State. Um, I just think that Tolia Tungavaloa is the real deal. I just think it was fluky in week one against Northwestern. But no, I don't think they'll win this time. But I think that it will be much closer than people anticipate. I don't think I'm going to sweat this cover out. I really don't. UTSA Rice over 46 and a half. It's just crazy that I'm taking a um, Conference USA total, but I love it. I think Rice has improved offensively, but I still don't trust their defense. And UTSA, I think, is an improved offensive team as, as well. And I think this game can be played into the 60s, quite frankly. I think that total is ridiculously low. So that's three. And then next up in the Fab Five picks, Arizona State getting 10.5 against USC. Um, I think that um, Herm Edwards has a good program going. Um, I still don't trust Clay Helton. And I just think that they are a sexy, sexy team, USC, in terms of the public. But I just don't think they're all that special. And I think Arizona State is equally as good as USC. So give me Zona State plus 
to ten and a half. And by the way, with full fans in the stands, I would make this game SC only by three. So give me Arizona State plus ten and a half over USC. And last but not least, Notre Dame four and a half against Clemson and my money line pick of the week plus one seventy six for the Irish. No Trevor Lawrence, no shot. Give me Notre Dame. Getting the points. I know that young quarterback showed some promise last week, but they also trailed 28-10 to 10 in that game against a mediocre to bad Boston College team. So this is Ian Book's time to shine. And I think this is what the signature win that Brian Kelly's been lacking for years now. So giving Notre Dame plus 4.5 against Clemson in that spot. And now NFL Fab 5. First up, Bills plus three against the Seahawks. Um, this is a trap spot for Seattle. I think Buffalo's due for a good offensive performance. And I think that this would be a win that would mean a lot more to them than their division rival Patriots, only because Buffalo's much better than New England. So give me the... Bills plus three against Seattle, and I think they win the game outright. Next up, Vegas Chargers over 51 and a half. I mentioned it earlier. I love this total. I don't have the biggest edge on this over, but I just love it. I think this game is played into the 60s, and I just think that Vegas is much better than what they showed offensively last week, and I think that the Chargers um, are always good for high 20s, low 30s. Cowboys-Steelers over 41 and a half. I mentioned earlier I think Pittsburgh can do this by themselves with that offense. Um, and all Dallas would do, have to do is score a touchdown or at least 10. 38 to 10 and it's done. So over... 41 and a half I love. New Orleans Tampa over 50 and a half. I talked about it earlier. Two veteran quarterbacks, two good offenses. Um, two defenses that I've seen vulnerabilities with against bad offenses is in the Giants and the Bears from last week. It's going to be over 50 and a half in New Orleans Tampa Bay. And plus Michael Thomas could be back this, this week for New Orleans as well. And then... Broncos getting four and a half against the Falcons and money line pick of the week plus 180 for Denver. So it's my second time taking Denver as a money line dog during the season. First time it worked out, and I believe it worked out the second time. And I feel much better about this one than I did against um, for the New England one, only because Denver, I think, is much better, looks better than they did against New England now. And then, obviously the Falcons have a tendency of blowing all these games, and then they just, we all know with the Falcons, they all they do is blow games. Then they got lucky last week against the Panthers. Maybe if McCaffrey plays in that game, they lose. So, yeah, Broncos 4 and a half, the last of the Fat Five, and then Moneyline Pick of the Week, plus 180 for the Denver Broncos. For them to get back over 500 on the season. And last but not least, my best bet of the day. Brought to you by FanDuel. We have a couple college games to look at for tonight. And... I'm not sure if I'm going to go with NC State. Um, I could go with the under in San Diego State, San Jose State, or I could go with Boise to knock off BYU. But I'm going to go with the one that you wouldn't think I'd go with, and that's the under in San Jose State, San Diego State. It's actually minus 106 right now, so I'm getting value on this under. So give me under 49 and a half between San Jose State and San Diego State for my best bet of the day. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back on Monday recapping all the games in college football in the NFL. I'll have an NBA mock draft for you. Maybe you'll know who the president is by Monday. 
And as I mentioned earlier, it's looking more and more likely that it's going to be Joe Biden. And we're going to have a first um, president to uh, get um, booted out of the White House after one term since um, George Bush in 1993, or 1992, I should say. So I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, everybody.